In this video, we're going to be talking about the Jira Advanced Roadmaps, aka Plants, Summer View. I'm going to tell you what it is, how you can use them, and why you should care. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And don't forget to check out those links down below, as I have links to my merch store, my paid courses, my free courses, and all the other different ways that you can help support this channel. Let's start talking about what Jira Advanced Roadmaps, Summer View is all about. So what is the summary view in your advanced program? Let me give you a quick little peek. As you can see, this is basically an overview. If you've used Jira work management, then you're probably very familiar with this, but essentially it's an overview of everything that is happening in your Jira advanced roadmap or your plan. I like to use jar because it just sounds cooler and better. But anyways, this is an overview. This just gives you a lot of information. It gives you some, very helpful things up at the top. It gives you some overviews. It gives you just a lot of insights that you and your team can use in order to make better and more strategic decisions. And this is very, very important, right? Because sometimes you can get lost in the weeds. Sometimes you can get lost in all that data. And this summary view is a great way to just elevate certain information, important information that you and your team need in order to be able to do some strategic decisions, right? Because Every time that your team doesn't take action, well, it leads to inaction and inaction leads to sometimes loss of money. So that's essentially what the Jira Advanced Roadmap Summary View is. Now, what makes this a little bit special is that very similar to the work management summary views there, it's an aggregate. So as we bring in data from multiple Jira projects, we have a single unified view that shows us all that important information, not just for like a team, but for a program or a project or whatever you're defining that is bigger and grander in scale. Now let's go talk about how do we actually use this. So first of all, you do need to be in a JAR, a Jira Advanced Roadmap. This is a Jira Cloud Premium only feature. If you're not on Jira Premium Cloud, you're not gonna be able to use this. So standard and free need not apply. But enterprise and premium, you're in luck. So there's nothing magical that you need to do. In fact, all you need to do is create the plan and then it automatically is created for you. Most of the time, when you are interacting with the jar, you're inside this timeline view. But today, we're not gonna be talking about this. We're gonna be describing how do we use this summary view. First thing you wanna know is that you get to control the dates. So pick the dates that make sense for you. This is gonna show you the last two weeks and show the next four weeks. But if you're doing like PI planning, this would be a great place to set up your entire PI, or maybe you wanna look at the previous PI. But the first thing you wanna do is set these dates. Now you could do relative or you could do fixed to be very explicit on those dates for what you want to see this metadata be for. I'm going to leave the defaults, but again, your mileage is going to vary based on the dates that you pick. Now there's a little bit of information, some homework, if you want to go do read some literature on how these insights are calculated, but let's focus on the insights. So the first thing that you get to see is going to be a list of these four items. Now you don't get to change these items. These are just created by Atlassian for you. And Atlassian has deemed that these are the most important things. So my recommendation would be work around this, right? Knowing that Jira cares about unassigned issues, critical priority, overdue, and blocked, you can now work with that, right? So now you can make sure you're using that due date. Make sure you're using your blocks and blocks by relationship. Make sure you're using your priority field. And most importantly, make sure you're assigning or not assigning tickets based on importance. So essentially, that information that I just described, that gets surfaced. Again, nothing you gotta do. It's all happening behind the scenes. All you need to worry about is that you can click on these and it's gonna take you to those particular items that are of interest. So that's kind of cool here. So I can click on that for my unassigned stuff. I can go back to my summary view, go look at those 34 critical issues, and it's just gonna show it to us right here. So if I expand priority, you're gonna see these are those critical items. So very, very helpful shortcuts. This is what my team needs to go hit and address and just take care of immediately because this is where the pain points are gonna be, again, according to what Atlassian cares for. Below that, we get to see a lot of different overviews for different things. So first, starting off from the left, we have a status overview. Now this is configurable a little bit. You're gonna see the statuses for a story, or you can do the drop down and do your epics. I just happen to call mine grande, but you can do your epics or you can do your initiatives. This all depends on your hierarchies of how you have your setup, but 
In most cases, you're going to have at least epic and stories. I just happen to have a renamed epic called the Grande and an initiative. Over to the right hand side, we have issues in progress. And again, very similar, not a whole lot of customization, but you're just going to see things that are in progress and the percent completes. Again, very, very beautiful metrics that are automatically calculated for you. These are going to be for your epics or you can go to your initiatives. Now, no stories on this one, but you can at least do those initiatives or you're there or those epics. Again, I just happen to call mine Grande. And then you can do a little filtering on the status category. It's not just gonna be like, is it to do in progress or done, like you those actual statuses, but rather the categories so you can see any issues that are in a particular status category. So now as we come down, we get to see a couple more things. We're gonna see key dependencies. Now this does depend, no pun intended, on you having that blocks and blocks by relationship, which is really easy to do because in the timeline view, all you gotta do is link these issues together. You just go from, you just grab an, the little plus sign, you drag it to another issue and you've established that dependency and now it's gonna be visible over here on the keys dependencies. Now, this is gonna show you key dependencies, right? This is Jira, again, analyzing and looking at your data and going, these are the most critical things you gotta go take care of as a team, but you can click on this view all dependencies and see everything. Now, you're Dependencies, you're gonna be able to see all statuses or again, pick from those categories. Now, if you're using the Teams, I'm not, I don't always use Teams. They're not always the best. I, I last one has burned me a couple times, but if you're using the Teams, you also do get to see this team progress. So as you have different teams, you get to see for that period of time, right? That period of performance, how are we doing, where their epics at or where the initiatives at with respect to that team. And again, you can see all the issues grouped by teams if that's something you wanna see but this is going to basically surface critical information for you. So at this point, our team's not doing too well. We're 0% complete. And then finally, again, if you're also using that team functionality, which again, I don't normally use, but if you are, you also have a capacity view. So if you wanna do resource allocation or capacity planning, this is gonna be the best way to do it. You can toggle between your different teams and then you can see information as to how many points are available to them and how many they've consumed and whatnot. So again, I don't use it, so it's, you're not gonna get the best view here, but you can kind of get a feel for the kind of data that you do get to see. And that's it, like there's not much other thing that you can do because these are pre-canned, right? Atlassian has determined that these exist and how they work, and you can't swap out things for something that you care about, and so you do gotta work your business around the things that it does show you, and hopefully everything else will fall into place. Now, why should you care about this? Well when we're running our teams, right? When we're doing our project management, if you're only using the jar itself or worse yet, if you're only relying on your boards, you might not get the full effect of the grander scale of where your project or your program are. And unless you're working with a really, really small team, then you probably don't care, right? But if you're like almost every other corporate team I've ever worked with, we're like a team of teams, right? We're very cross-functional. Cross-functional is a word that exists in our DNA a lot as these enterprise companies that we are. And so this cross-functional view of being able to see everything, not just for one project, not just for one little team, but the whole grand scheme of things, this is a very critical and powerful view and one that I highly recommend that you use because when you can have this insight, when you can have this information and be able to make decisions like, hey, I have 29 overdue issues. If I have to go and figure out what resource am I gonna channel where, what's probably gonna be to tackle the overdue work or maybe have blocked work, right? And this is all about as your project manager or your technical program manager, as they're trying to figure out how and where do we send our troops? How do we put out this next fire? Where is this next fire? Well, this summary view is gonna give us that executive view without having to build dashboards. Because all of this could technically be created as a dashboard, but now you gotta go create filters, now you gotta go do this and that. And yeah, you get a little bit more flexibility, but the problem that I usually see is that sometimes teams focus on the wrong things, right? Sometimes they just do metrics for the sake of metrics, but these are critical ones that Atlassian has again deemed worthy. These are what Atlassian thinks if you follow, if you follow through with them, then you should be more effective and your projects and programs will hopefully start trending in the better direction. So that's kind of why you should use this or why you should pay attention because that insight is very, very powerful, right? It's just a very, very powerful view to see your aggregated data, to see your summary, to see where those problems are, where's your boat leaking, and then figure out how to clog those holes up so that the water doesn't exit your boat. 
right? Because nobody wants to be drowning. But anyways, that's it for this video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, and most importantly, there's links down below. Check them all out. We got some really cool merch. We have some paid courses, some free courses. I have one-on-one -on -one memberships. I have just donations. Whatever you want, whatever you're looking for, I probably have a resource for you. So everything is in that link tree down below. So go check it out, and I'll see you in the next one.